Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Car Hacking Village uh, Turbo Talks with Samir and Vlad, abusing smart cars with QR codes. Welcome, everyone. My name is Samir. I'm the Senior Director, Security Consulting for Spartan Security Labs. And along with me, I have Vlad. Hello. My name is Vlad Gusimelsky, uh Senior Security Consultant at Spartan Federal. Uh, <coughs> uh, Samir and I work on uh, doing security assessments on uh, various devices, uh, smart vehicles, scale systems, uh, wide-scale distributed networks, uh, satellite systems, um, that sort of thing. Applications, mobile, and anything in between. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we have, uh, for today's ag agenda, we are talking about ab abusing smart cars with QR codes. And for you, uh, we'll talk about history of QR codes. QR codes have been around for over two decades. Uh, how QR code got ventured into the automotive space, what are they being currently used for in automotive industry, uh, especially with smart cars, what are some of the security challenges around it, and uh, some of the uh, trivia questions that we are going to have. So please listen in carefully. Uh, you are going to win a uh, T-shirt that I'm wearing, uh, Do Good, No Evil. Uh, we are not going to give it in the talk. So whoever wins, uh, please collect it with Tej. He's Sitting right in the end, you can see his hand right there. So let's get started. So history of QR codes, as I said, right? I mean, it's been uh, there for over two decades. It was born in Japan um, with a two-people team, uh, Masahiro Hara, and one more team member. Uh, Denso Corporation was sort of the owner for that. Uh, it gained its popularity in 2002 when it started getting... Uh, used for general purposes, uh, for ticketing systems, for advertising, for uh, various other things. Do you want to add anything? Uh, so, previously when uh, QR codes were used, uh, people were using dedicated readers for them, uh, just like the kind that you see in the store uh, for scanning prices of various products. Uh, as smart uh, smartphones became more popular, it was not able to, it was not possible to capture with your phone's camera and decode it. Uh, so it really opened up the, the market for everyone. Uh, home users were now able to uh, open up hyperlinks. Uh, there are instructions with their smartphone. Uh, they're able to follow directions, uh, check in at uh, various locations, uh, do their own inventory control. All right. That brings us to our first trivia question. Which automaker first started using QR codes and when? Toyota. All right, when? All right, you get half of a t-shirt. <laughs> Anyone else wants to take a stab at it? 99. 99? 94. 94? All right, you get the other half of the t-shirt. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, so you're right. So you're Toyota started using them at, uh, in 1994 um, for actually tracking the parts and the cars that they were making. So please make sure that you get your half and half t-shirt from Tej. Uh, current use of QR code in tra uh, transportation industry is sort of like now widespread, right? Uh, they are using for, just as I said, right, tracking cars and its parts, for inventory control, for fleet tracking. Um, also, uh, Michigan Department of uh, Transportation has recently started using them for signal repairs. So the image that you see is actual actual image where um, instead of having a big log that they used to store in the signal uh, repair box itself, now instead of that they take their uh, smart devices, scan the QR code, and then through that they are able to gain all the information that they need to have uh, f for repairing the system. Uh, it's being also used widely in automotive sales. It's sort of like replicating the good salespeople because you can actually scan a QR code and get a consistent uh, message about what this vehicle is, what are its capabilities, engine, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and marketing and promotions have been around for ages. Bloody or not. So next trivia question. So can anybody tell me if a QR code can be hacked? Yes. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on it? <laughs> <laughs> That's not hacking, that's like fabricating. 
So you get a negative T-shirt, so you, you put together. <laughs> yes, gentlemen in the back. Uh, if QR codes are linked to a URL shortener, which most of them are, you can tamper with the URL shortener and redirect the user to a different place. Absolutely, you do get a shirt. So the overall answer is no. I mean, you do have to physically uh, tamper the black and white to kind of make it uh, spook someone. So, so uh, please get it. You, can, you get a full T-shirt. So now that it cannot be hacked, what is, what is the real problem? All right. I think the next few images will tell you what the real problem is. When we start really using them for telling directions to smart cars and autonomous vehicles, uh, and this is happening in California. Uh, California Department of Transportation is the first one to actually start rolling out uh, QR codes on the side of the roads. Uh, that's because it's the number one location in the United States right now uh, where autonomous and semi-autonomous vehicles are on the roads. Uh, right now they're using them to signal uh, construction zones ahead. Uh, they're starting to roll out uh, speed limit signs uh, in the form of QR codes. So anyone want to take like a guess on what are other problems that can ha happen in a smart cars with QR codes? There are more t-shirts to give away. All right. All right, I'll make it easy for you. So the first thing is, right, I mean, you could have a QR code that uh, maliciously directs you to a link that gets you, that gets a malware onto, onto your movil, moving vehicle or uh, for a particular comp component. Then there are issues with physical manipulations. If uh, in the night someone switches the QR code from stop sign to speed at 50 miles an hour, that could be an issue. So you could cause a lot of havoc. And then some intentional and uh, unintentional removal of the code. If the next generation cars are going to rely on QR codes for V2X uh, communication, then you have an issue because if, uh, there are lighting issues if it's unable to read the sign, if, it's, if there's too much bright light, if there's raining or other envir environmental factors, that could be an issue unless it's been coupled with other technologies like GPS and others. Uh, that's right. So, for example, if you're, when we do V2V, v 2 x communication, we're using a radio signal, uh, the signal could be monitored. Uh, there are actually uh, ground listening stations that would observe that communication and uh, notice if uh, something is happening that possibly shouldn't. Uh, as a police officer drives down the road, <coughs> they can physically look at the signs and they will know if something is missing. But if it's a QR code sign, since it's not human readable, uh, a human can't actually immediately recognize if the sign has changed or has been tampered with. Even if somebody walks up with a Sharpie marker and draws on it, uh, it'll uh, A, modify the sign, or B, make it unreadable, and somebody driving by at 70 miles an hour will not be able to tell the difference. Now, this is one of my favorites. Uh, so, I did mention speed limit signs. Uh, if somebody were to swap out speed limit signs for 25 miles an hour school zone and 75 miles an hour on the highway, uh, they are both valid signs, but by transposing them in different locations, uh, you're impacting the school zone as well as the highway for the smart vehicles that would actually be the sign. And of course, you look like an idiot to the normal vehicles going on the highway because your autonomous vehicle all of a sudden slowed down or is uh, barreling through the school zone. Uh, other fun signs to move around are the one-way signs, uh, traffic keep left, uh, keep right, or if you're trying to merge into 287 north or south, uh, and the human readable sign is very clear, whereas the QR code is telling your smart vehicle to uh, get in the wrong lane. Obscuring QR codes, right? That brings a lot of issues. So like, if there's a mud splash on a QR code, you cannot read it. If there's stickers, someone and graffiti. Graffiti artists love to draw on uh, signs that are on the side of the road or overhead. That could be an issue because then it becomes unreadable. There are li lighting issues as I talked earlier. Uh, rain or snow can affect the visibility of those signs and the readability of those signs. And then also li other environmental factors like sun damage, they can get faded over time. Those, those are some of the valid use cases. And then obviously the thieves. Like the guy, this one, he likes 
holding these boards for, for some obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, so as we were looking for an image for the slide, the first thing that struck me as I found this image is, oh man, I don't have uh, one of those signs yet. <laughs> And uh, having lived near High Street, you wouldn't believe the number of times that that sign disappeared. <laughs> and if, that's, if that sign is removed, this is what you're expecting. So the kind of things you typically wouldn't think about as a human driver, a sign for a boat ramp or a, uh, a sign warning you to stop uh, is not necessary for a human driver because you see that there's a, a boat ramp. Uh, whereas a semi-autonomous vehicle can proceed going down the road because it's a nice paved road, nice uh, gradual decline, and a parking spot at the very bottom. Malicious links. We, we did talk about like how a smart car can get itself uh, into a situation where a malicious code can be downloaded on it. It could be a malware or something. So it scans a QR code, QR code then directs it to a malware site, and then the uh, malware gets dumped onto the vehicle. So that's, again, a possibility uh, with the QR codes as an issue. Exactly. So as we mentioned earlier, uh, we have not seen any successful implementations of an actual buffer overflow within the QR code. But as the gentleman in the back uh, left uh, correctly pointed out, uh, if you tamper with external things the QR code actually points you at, whether it's a URL shortener or another resource, you can actually then push across uh, malicious code via that avenue. And as Vlad mentioned earlier, right, I mean, these changes are not really noticeable by human eyes. So it's, it's a machine-readable code only. So if, if a stop sign gets uh, changed by the yield sign, you would not be able to tell unless uh, you, are Q, you have a QR code reader. So that's, that also brings issues with both intentional and un unintentional uh, attacks because someone who's trying to actually just be on the side of the road try to service them and switch one with the others, that could create a, create a havoc. So one of, the best attack to, uh, one of the best attack vectors is the human. Uh, if you've ever seen the fine paving job the Department of Public Works sometimes does and uh, the way they put up signs, uh, imagine if they're putting up Q, uh, QR code signs. Uh, it's very conceivable to actually see them putting up the wrong sign because they were pretty sure they were holding the right sign, they'll put it up on the side of the road and move, them, move down to the next mile marker. It's your favorite, why don't you talk uh, One of the funniest things I found, uh, somebody who was doing a little bit of experimentation with the uh, uh, camera systems on the semi-autonomous vehicles. So this is actually a not self-driving car, but this is a car that has lane assist technology and it was turned on. And they had a little bit of fun with uh, salt. And they actually made a solid line and a dot line around the vehicle and the vehicle refused to drive out. So they essentially made a smart trap. You've probably seen it previously in the movies in the voodoo acts that <laughs> spray salt around and, and things go away. I, I use it for driving ants and killing them around my house. So, but you can also do that for smart cars. So now that brings us to kind of like uh, towards the end of it, which is the solutions. There aren't really very many solutions because first of all, the technology and its implementation in the automotive space is very new. And... Uh, you could, one could do like a unique signs, uh, si signing of uh, the QR codes to say, hey, only autonomous cars or self-driving uh, self cars can actually read it for its uh, authenticity. The other things that you could also do is like cryptographic validation. Uh, so essentially, for example, uh, California Department of Transportation uh, can create a signing key and sign their signs, and then somebody would have to either produce an identical sign, uh, which would kill off one of the attack vectors. Uh, I think the most interesting one is actually GPS validation. And that's encoding the correct GPS location of that sign within the QR code. So then your smart car would actually uh, compare its current GPS location, uh, have uh, a bit of wiggle room, uh, uh, and interpret the sign as valid or invalid. But then, of course, you would have to depend on the trust within the GPS system and the fact that there's no GPS spoofing uh, happening around you uh, or the fact that the GPS is actually reliable in your area. 
Uh, and of course, attackers could also manufacture their own signs. Once, uh, once a standard format is known, it's only a matter of time until uh, the attackers advance as well. So does anyone know what is a SR code? All right. What's the full form of QR code? Quick response. SR code is a slow response code. So when you add cryptographic uh, overheads to it, it can make a QR code into an SR code, and it will look like this. All right, so uh, on to, again, trivia questions. Who can name a few ways that QR codes could be manipulated? Yes. Who, re who remembers the first wide scale uh, marketing deployment of QR codes? That was hijacked. Yes. Uh, actually, it was uh, a federal agency. Uh, here's a hint uh, they were putting up uh, pictures of zombies asking, Are you prepared? Uh, <laughs> uh, so a certain agency that's interested in uh, people making sure that they actually have preparedness kits at home uh, and that they know how to deal with a uh, uh, pandemic outbreak uh, was putting up uh, posters and QR codes on New York City bus stops. And then some enterprising individuals uh, started putting up QR codes, uh, perfectly covering up the QR code uh, that was put up. <laughs> and we actually did, uh, yes, I have a question in the back. Any, yeah, an essentially negative space attack, yes. Yeah. Uh, that would absolutely work. Uh, but these individuals were actually putting up links to a malicious website uh, and to spam websites. And as really bored people were sitting there at the bus stop would take pictures of it and follow those links. Uh, can we answer any questions? Yes. Uh, so we've been playing with a few HUD units. Uh, we've been able to observe crashes with uh, malicious codes we've been able to craft up. We have not been able to get code execution. I don't think anybody else has been. But the fact that we can get a system to lock up and reboot uh, is an indicator that there's uh, definitely avenues to be explored there. That, that's why the talk is kind of like futuristic looking because we have we have seen the uh, smart cars trying to use it. There was actually a news article on it, which I, which was the reason why we did this talk. Uh, this was almost like a month or two months ago. That's all right. So what happened is the California Department of Transportation said they're going to roll out the system. So any autonomous vehicles that have cameras on board, it's just a matter of firmware update. No manufacturers are doing it because signs haven't shown up yet. Uh, but as they start showing up next few months, next few years, uh, you're going to see firmware updates coming out uh, specifically to be able to read them. We do have an advanced head unit that can read them right now. But I do want to say that I don't believe that it's going to only depend on just the QR code scanning. One, they probably would be smarter than that, not to rely on that. We really hope. The nice, nice That is correct. You work for me, so you don't get a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a question. So, did you deal with people who uh, um, uh, question this, the, the problems with it, because people can be altering the signs, causing humans to make mistakes. Like, they could, you know, cover up the stop sign. They could be doing some of these same sort of similar attacks, but, but fooling humans instead. Uh, so we do see that, especially in inner cities, it's very popular. <clears throat> uh, in inner cities, uh, where people uh, may not necessarily be friendly to police officers, it's very common to take a street sign and turn it at 90 degrees, uh, so that somebody trying to orient themselves or somebody trying to respond uh, would get the street cross-section wrong, or they're going down one street, and the street they're going down changes. Uh, so now imagine being able to use two autonomous vehicles that are supposedly immune to this. Uh, but 
if you're going down the road and you see that somebody was really bored and shot at a stop sign and it has some buckshot holes, you still know it's a stop sign. But if you're missing an eighth of a QR code, uh, the error correction will not make up for it. You, you simply have a sign that, that's unreadable to you. And it could be a, a construction zone ahead sign, it could be a 70 mile an hour sign, or it could be a stop sign. Not at all. Please. Uh, there's a lot of complexity in, the, in, the, in most QR codes that you see, but it seems like for simple messages like stop, if that's all it's trying to convey, like why not have something more uh, resilient to, to those kinds of either intentional or unintentional um, and, and that's why that's why I commented earlier, right? Um, when the autonomous vehicles become a reality, which is very close, I don't think they will rely solely on the QR code, and that's, that's my hope. Because again, I mean, we just shared uh, several examples and use cases where it could fail if it just relies on a QR code scan. Exactly, so what happened is once we saw the California Department of Transportation announcement, uh, we were able to grab the specs, we were able to grab some of the sample signs. Uh, I had used with some of the first firmware that is supposed to be able to read it. And that's all we had to go on because that's all that's available right now. It's in the proposal phase, and hopefully it's going to go through a few revisions before it actually uh, becomes mainstream. Has anyone, and this is a curiosity question, it's not a trivia question. Has anyone been able to, or doing any research in uh, doing a man in the middle attack for, with QR codes? Doing a remote attack with a man in the middle? In the room? All right. Something where you are sort of be able to uh, intercept uh, intercept the image before it gets read by the device. Uh, yeah. So that's that's one of, that's another one thing that they could do to uh, at least uh, minimize the human um, what you call the physical. Um, Tampering. Yeah, so if they do QR coding, will prevent one problem. <coughs> but it yeah, it, it opens up other issues because, again, uh, with the digital uh, image uh, projections, then there's lighting issues, there's like depth issues of the colors and other things. So there's, there's other factors that needs to be taken into consideration. Uh, so the funniest thing that I've been able to play with is uh, those of you that remember those little badges that you had those little kids with googly eyes where depending on which angle you look at, it's a different image. It's actually possible to print out QR codes. So if you're in the left lane or the right lane, you're seeing a different QR code. <laughs> Uh, and they actually appear to be read really, really well. The fact that you have a prism uh, facing out um, actually means that you're getting less interference from the rain and snow and less grime on it. So they actually become less readable than th real flat QR codes. <laughs> any, any other questions? Thank you. All right, so last housekeeping slide. If you guys have any other questions that you haven't asked yet or you are a little bit shy and want to have it, the private, private conversation, you can reach out to Vlad and I at spiron.com or Vlad at uh, spirenfederal.com, and then you can reach out to also Security Labs. We will be in Car Hacking Village booth, so if you have any other questions that you want to get answered today, do reach out uh, at Car Hacking Village. And thank you for attending. Uh, and please, uh, whoever hasn't collected their T-shirt, uh, those two guys in the back in the pink, they should be able to get you your T-shirts. Thanks, everyone. Bye.